Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part number eight of the Plastic Models for Beginners series Tamiya M381 Scout Car. So where I left off last time was um, uh, the construction's completely done. Um, everything is painted, including I uh, installed that figure, painted this figure, got him ready to go. So the only thing left to do is to do some weathering, and that's what I'm going to do today. And I think I'm going to start with applying some um, light, dusty mud effects underneath the bottom here. All right, so the first thing I need to do really is I need to paint the exhaust. Um, now, I'm not too concerned about painting the whole exhaust um, underneath and everything, but I am going to uh, get it painted up and uh, the part that you can see and get it. Rust it up. So let's see. Let's get this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base layer of armor brown on it. And then I'll use some oil paints once that's dried to um, get some variation so it's not just a solid color. So you know, I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Now, keep in mind that generally when I'm weathering a model, this is where it starts coming apart because I'm all over the place because I never, ever use the same methods twice. And uh, I just end up just being crazy. So let's see that I need my cleaning water here so let's get this I'm just using this number five brush here because I don't have to be like real careful detail painting so we'll get the muffler first and my plan is Hopefully, unless I change half part way through, which is very likely to happen, but I'm going to do some um, like old mud, like stuck on mud, and then I'm going to do some like dusty stuff on top of that. Like, you know, mud's built up from driving around and in inclement weather, and then, uh, you know, it's just dried in place, and then. dust is built up on top of it but that is the general idea so as you saw the paint I'm using is uh, Alejo model air which I really really like for brush painting Pretty thin, just pour some out, get cracking. <clears throat> All right, so that looks good. So while that is drying, and before I get too much into the muddy stuff, I think I need to do a little bit of um, streaking and stuff first. And I'm going to be using my oil paints for that. So I will be using... I'm going to use light mud. buff so 
get my handy dandy. Oh, let's see, my applicator brush. I think I'll use this one this time. And what I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put some splotchiness around on the vehicle. And I think I'm gonna use light mud for that. The Abtiloon 502 light mud. And I really need to clean my lids. These are getting disgusting and it's driving me nuts. So uh, let's get a little bit of that. And I'm just going to do a section, um, section at a time. So just put some dots around like that. I'll go ahead and do this one at the same time. I'll have time to work with it so there's no need in prolonging it too much. And I'm also going to put a little bit of earth which is a little more uh, of an orangish brown color just to mix it up a little bit. Add some variation keeping in mind that this is just the first layer of a few. I'm not going to put too much of this on there because I don't want it to look faux rust or anything like that. Alright, so that will get me started there. Alright, so I've got my clean thinner out. I've got my uh, it's a fairly new brush. It's a chisel blender. Uh, Master's Touch from um, Hobby Lobby here in the States. So I'm getting a little bit of thinner on there, wiping most of it off. And then I'm just going to start stippling it around like this. Just to give it a kind of a patchy, faded look. I may change my brush, but we'll see. This may be better for doing streaking. But like I said, I never do the same thing twice. Yeah, I'm going to try a different brush. I don't like that one. So let's go with... Let's go with this one here. This is an old cheapo Maximo brush right here. Yeah, it's better. I like that better. It pushes it around a little bit more. Basically, I'm just going to keep doing this all over the model. So I'll continue on. Once I get all that done and it has time to dry, I'll come back. And before I get too far, I just want to point this out so you can see the effect you get. This just looks too, way too uniform and clean, whereas this has kind of more of a splotchy, weather-beaten, dusty appearance to it. So that's the whole that's the whole reason behind doing that. So I'll continue on around and then uh, I'll come back and take a look. I'm also going to be doing the inside uh, with this first base of uh, oil dots and then uh, come back and start working on the next. Okay, so I've got all that. So I think the next thing I'm going to do um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of streaking and I'm going to use the same colors but I'm also going to throw in some darker, let's see if I can find it here. I don't want engine grease. I want, there it is, dark mud. And I'm using that one because it is uh, it's a pretty good color. 
for doing dark stuff without it being like too brown. So I'll put some of that on my little palette there. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to take the old brush here and I'll demonstrate right here what I'm gonna do and then move on like I do with the rest of it. So I'm just gonna put some dots somewhat randomly, as randomly as I can get them along here like that. And then clean my brush. Get some of this. Put in here as well. Trying to like that. Clean my brush. And then using one of my handy dandy streaking brush here. Oh, let's see, I need some I'm, gonna treat my I'm just gonna take, and I don't need clean stuff for this because it's gonna be all streaky anyway. So get this, get it wet, damp I should say, and then just streak it down like that. And then keep working at because I don't want it to be like real delineated streaks I want it to just be kind of streaky looking just give the hint of streaking and it's also going to further streak the the stuff I did earlier so let that dry for a minute. Really try and keep it vertical and don't let it drift off into weird curves or anything like that. So let that dry for a minute. All right, so hopefully you can see a little bit of how it turned out. So we got these darker streaks here and then just a little more faint streaking going down. So I'm gonna go on around just like I did before, do that and then uh, come back and um, We'll take a look at what I've got. All right, so we got the streaking done on it. I'm kind of digging it. Looks pretty good. So I need to let that dry up for a little bit. So while I do that, I'm going to kind of clean up my area here. And so next, I think I will actually start with the stuff underneath. And I'm going to tackle that a little bit differently because I'm going to do some... Uh, some mud and dust under up underneath there so i'm gonna get this other stuff okay and i'll work right there so let's see let's go with i'm gonna go with um thick light brown mud and splash light brown mud first and actually, you know what I think I'm going to do first is I think I'm going to go ahead and get this taken care of. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my, uh, let's see. Let's see which color would look better. That one's not quite what I want. Uh, let's see. So I think... Yeah, I'm gonna do, okay, so I've already got some of that out. So I'm going to use that. And basically what I'm going to do is I am going to stipple that onto... Um, I'm going to do the same thing. 
I'm just gonna put some dots of it. Whoa, some dots of it on the muffler and the tailpipe. And then I'm gonna use my brush with some thinner on it. Well, I may not even use. Well, it'll be it'll be dampened, but it's not gonna be quite as drastic as. Uh, stuff I was doing on the vehicle just put that around there like that and then I'll just kind of stipple that on there um, let's see so let's take that's where I think this brush will work good let's see if I'm right so again I'm just gonna use my dirty thinner I'm not worried about it. same thing moisten it and then just kind of jab it on there like that just to give it an appearance an uneven appearance like a rusty heat and water damaged exhaust system now here is something um, I used to do whenever I did rust before and I still do it once in a while depending on the context but I used to always get you know pigments and stuff and make a lot of real heavy texture and stuff like that on my exhaust and while that might be good for some things, um, I think sometimes it can be overdone. And here's why I say that. If you look at, now I know materials have changed over the years, steels and stuff like that. But if you look at, even on um, heavy equipment, big earth movers, bulldozers, back hose, skip loaders, whatever. And they're um, exhaust systems are pretty exposed to the elements. And uh, they, they get rusty, but they don't have like big chunks and flakes coming off and real heavy texture, especially on cars. But, you know, I think cars, maybe they use better stuff on cars. I don't know, but it's not real heavily messed up so although a really chunky looking exhaust can be good at times sometimes it can be overdone especially considering that a lot of these vehicles you know they may be exposed to the elements and stuff but some of them have a pretty short lifespan before they're just blown up and written off as you know unusable so you know that's just some, my two cents worth on on the on the exhaust it's not necessary every time to make a lot of heavy texture on it uh, because I just don't think some vehicles lasted long enough and you know I mean, whether it be a few months or even a year it's not gonna get that messed up but that's what I think and just from what I've observed of uh, equipment you know out and about but anyway, so I got that uh, done there. So now I can start thinking about doing some of this mud. So let me see what I'm gonna do. Let's get the thick light brown mud and see what I can come up with here. So what I'm doing with the heavier mud is I'm packing it up into the corner where these two, uh, where the curved portion of the, um, fender meets the um, 
side part there. Pack it in there real good so there's no grain left. I'm not getting it too heavy. I just want it to look like stuff's got thrown up in there and kind of stuck, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's just like really built up, like some of it's fallen off. And then run it down a little bit further like that. Now it's still looking stark, but remember, oh shoot, I didn't want to do that. Uh, remember, I'm going to be adding more on the outside. Right now I'm just focusing on the inside here and I want to get it and it's going to have um, pigments and everything else up in there. And I do want to have some up top here but Not too much. Just I just want to give it the texture because this is the thick. This is the thick, um, the thick mud. Like that. And keeping in mind that's all going to be totally covered by the wheel back there. So then I want to do a little bit. back here it's mainly for texture so we'll do it on this side So I'm going to keep going on around all these fenders. I'm going to do the same stuff up here, but I'll come back to that in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to fill all this in. Okay, here's what I've got so far. So, got most of it covered pretty good. I think I'm getting too much on the outside, which I don't want. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this up with a mist of... Um, buff or something like that just to get some just to get some uh, so it's not so stark underneath because that's pretty stark between the two colors uh, between the the uh, all drab and the the olive drab and the um, the mud color here so I don't want it to be quite so stark so I'm just gonna mist a little bit on there just to dull that green down a little bit bring it down and then you know putting other stuff on there will give it some depth and some extra color and stuff but I also have to remember I need to do these whoa the wheels so I need to do the back sides of the wheels I need to build up a little bit of crud in there but not too much because it's still got to fit on there so I think, let's see, not the back wheels, let's see, but the front wheels are the ones that's going to need a little bit in there because the hubs are smaller. So let me clean this brush and then I'll start getting a little bit of mud in these wheels here. Okay, I'm using a little bit of uh, Tamiya XF57 buff. A little bit of X20A thinner and I made it really thin so it should get it just a little bit dusty looking Again, remember, there's more going to go on top of all this, so I just want to knock the starkness down of the 
base colors and make it look a little more fady along the bottom than the rest of the vehicle. Okay, let's see. So we got that. So now let's see. I'm not just totally painting it. I'm just kind of toning it down a little bit. quite so quite so stark and different. I'm gonna get underneath here. a little bit along the bottom edges here again to since this is closer to the ground just a little bit more Fadiness, if that's a real word. Hopefully, I can always before I actually run out of what I got mixed up here. like I want it. I'm going to be filling in with the nooks and crannies and stuff with some other stuff, but this will kind of get the whole idea started here. bit higher on the back from the dust that kicks up from driving down the road. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let me clean my airbrush. All right, so right now what I'm doing, um, I got some pigments drying elsewhere. So right now I'm using Ultimate Modeling Products Clay Wash earth it's called earth i'm using that on the recess and kind of hidden areas on top of the um the thick mud and i'm just doing it to break up the uh uniformity of the color of the mud and it's going to be underneath where you're not really going to see it but I just wanted to do it part, partly to experiment, but also um, see how it would look, giving it some extra, see if it would give it a little bit of extra pop, for lack of a better term. As you 
you can see it's kind of filling in a little bit and this is underneath where it's dark anyway so that's kind of why I chose this color for this I don't think I do this up on the upper parts of the vehicle but as you can see it's it's discoloring it a bit it's kind of making the uh, the mud more um, a little darker brown almost a grayish brown but again it's just underneath so I'm not too concerned with it being like any kind of like I don't know real world thing I just want to don't want it to be quite so stark and I may go over it with some lighter clay washes to add a little bit more texture to it but we'll see I really really don't like doing weathering stuff on my channel because I never do the same thing twice I never do it's just always all over the place and uh, you know somebody's trying to learn something well I guess you are learning some and that is never rely on the same thing every time try different things just to kind of just to kind of mix it up a little bit see it's more brown than black this color looks almost black until it starts drying and then it's a little more brown and then once this dries some I'm gonna try um, another color on top of this and see what happens I'm kind of a Cretan when it comes to weathering stuff it's just not I've had very few models that I've really really been stoked with the weathering and most times I'm just you know after I do it I'm like yeah it looks cool I'm good with that sometimes until I get done I just don't know if it looks good or if it's just been a exercise in futility so I'm gonna keep going with this now that you've seen what I'm doing and I'll come back and uh, see how it looks so next I'm just taking my brush kind of blending all that in and again, this is just to give it some variation underneath. I'm not so really concerned about, you know, how realistic it looks or whatever you want to call it, but it's kind of a good place to practice too. And I do like the results. It looks pretty good. It's a really stiff brush, so that's, it's helping blend it in. but the look I'm really going for I'll show you here in a second so that looks pretty good is this right here that's where I put the uh, pigments and I used light sienna first and I may add some dark earth, but uh, that's kind of what I'm going for. <laughs> kind of a really dirty look there. So using this, I just uh, kind of sprinkle it on there and then using this MIG pigment fixer that needs to be shaken up really well because it's got some kind of weird adhesive gluey stuff inside of it. I use my fixer brush that I've clearly labeled so I won't use it for anything else 
and I just take it, make sure the it's pretty saturated, and then just touch it to the the pigment to fix it in place. I always wipe it off before I stick it back in the thing because I don't want to get I don't want to get pigment in the uh, fixer bottle. I don't want it discolored. So all the rest of that was just pretty much a base. For the pigment like this looks really blotchy and nasty looking right now but when it dries it will look more like that so it looks a lot more three-dimensional in appearance than and you can use other things to uh, fix this but the fixer seems to work a little bit better I think so I'll let that dry Did you see how I got this all set up? Took all the paint things off and put them in here like this. I got all my paint in the drawers and it feels so much more. I'm going to angle this, chop that, put the bottle there. It's really close and handy and all that space. Especially when you got you know something coming up like the Mustang that has you know 200 sprus in it, I'll have enough room to hang them up. Sweet. Just reorganize my drawers. See, all my weathering stuff is just in this one, so I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, that's still recording. Oh my lord, it sure is. Okay, so you can see underneath there that uh, that's dried up. So I need to do the, other, the same thing to the other side. Um, so let's see, where is my, here it is, right in front of my face. So on this one, I'm going to try something just a little bit different because you know me, I never do the same thing twice. I'm going to kind of scrub it in first and then. Tap it into place like that. Like that. So trying to trying to just get it kind of evenly distributed like that so now I can do the same thing with the 
pigment fixer, which I need to order some more, I think, because I'm getting pretty, pretty low. <clears throat> I don't think I've used pigment on my channel in quite a while. And uh, there's no reason for it other than I just haven't. But it does... It does look a bit different than the other stuff I do. And just like everything else, it's got its place, I guess. It works good. The only thing is, it does take a bit for, for it to dry. If you're like me, I like to get things done. Now one thing, and I haven't done this in a really long time, and I think I may change back once I use up these mud products I have, because although I do like these mud products, they just, there's something about them that I just don't quite like as much as making my own mud with Fixer and, um, uh, actually I use Pigment Binder is what I use. And I mix it up and my, I make my own mud basically. And I really like it. It works good. And I think it just looks a little bit better. It just seems to be not quite so. The thing about the thing about the mud products that I use, these Vallejo splash mud and stuff like that, they just they just don't look as realistic to me as doing it with um, the uh, uh, pigment and pigment binder. So, call me crazy, but it's just the way it seems to me. It just seems to look a little bit better. So anyway, there's that. So we'll let that dry for a bit and then uh, come back, do some more stuff. So while that's drying, I'm gonna apply some of this um, light dirt clay wash on these wheels making sure making sure I get it into the uh, tread really well and I'll show you why in a bit now I don't want to get too much oh, let's see Mainly focusing on the rubber right now, so I'm kind of avoiding getting it in the wheel itself. The rim. So I'm just going to make sure I get it all in the tread really well. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Alright, so here is what I'm doing now. So these... Um, have dried and as you can see it's got a nice coating of the ultimate weathering wash light dirt and here's what I'm doing I'm just taking this little short scrubby brush that I use for this type of stuff and just scrubbing it off like this and what it's doing is it's leaving this tire really dusty looking and uh, it's one of the things I really like about this this stuff and flip it over do the same thing here you can use a q-tip other stuff you know whatever certain things I do use a q-tip just because it's not convenient to scrub it with this brush but then scrub the top like that and what I'm doing here is it's scrubbing it almost back down to the rubber but it's leaving it stained a little bit with this uh, this wash and I'm leaving the deposits as you can see I'm, I'm doing it against I'm not going this way because it would rub some of that out of there uh, which I might do watch let's let's take a look but anyway if you want the, tr the treads really packed in with dirt that's the way you do it or you can do this
and that will leave it will clean it out somewhat but it leaves it like just right in the the edges of the tread so it looks like you know it's gone through some soft road type stuff and rub some of that dirt out so if you can leave it either way but there you go so it gives you a nice dirty tire it doesn't look like it just came off the line so i'll work on that for a little bit and then i'll come back and uh look some more at what we're going to do inside of here as a little safety tip here i would recommend that if you don't have a good cross breeze going from going from a fan or something that you wear um, wear a mask of some kind, <laughs> which everybody should have these days on hand, just so you can you know go out your front door. But this does create quite a bit of dust, as you can see by what's being deposited on my finger here. So you know, just a little little safety tip for the day. So right now I mixed up some of my. Uh, Abitalium 502 dark mud and I'm going to spread some of this in here to darken it up a little bit because it's just still looking just a little bit too light for me be drying up I'll start thinking about what I'm gonna start doing on the fenders and all that kind of stuff all right so here's what I'm doing right now you can see on here that I've got some uh, I got a little bit of my um, buff and dark mud oil paints here I'm using this number two filbert brush and what I'm doing is I'm building up some dust effects in areas where I would think it would build up to so like any you know edges places where it can kind of collect so I'm just using a dry brush too I'm not I'm not using uh, there's no thinner on this brush at all and I think if I tried to use thinner on it it would just totally jack it up so so I'm just rubbing in feathering it out I don't want a hard edge on it and FYI this is the first time I've ever done this so we're learning together folks like I said I don't do weathering the same way twice because but I may be doing this one again because this one seems to work pretty good I like this so I'm just blending it in focusing on the fender right now and then I'll go up on the actual side of the vehicle kind of blend some up like that Now down here, I did that first and then I used the dark mud on top of it to get it a little more road grimy looking around the bottom edge. Like, like this. I don't want to get too much. But it looks like dust and then some just the, that grayish road grind that you find along the edges, bottom edges of vehicles. Like that. So that's what we got going right here. Wow. 
like that. So let's flip it around to the other side. No, let's do a little bit right here. this said and done probably gonna have to hit it with a clear coat flat because maybe semi-gloss I don't know but um, this may end up looking a little bit shiny this oil paint so we'll see when I'm done though I don't want it to minimize the effect so there we are so I'm going to continue on around the back and this other side here and then come back okay so I did some um, pigments on the inside Kind of dusted it up a little bit. Now I'm going to put the wheels on. And really, the only thing left will be to add some oil stains and oil drips and stuff like that. So there's what it looks like so far. So let's take a look here. What I want to do. I think what I need to do first is get my machine guns in place. So let's see where those go. All right, so I got the guns in and I got the uh, I'm going to assume he's the commander in place. So let me change up the camera angle and we'll take a look at the finished product. All right, here it is. And just so you know, I'll add some photos, some better photos at the end. But here it is. Tamiya 135th scale M3A1 scout car in Soviet markings. So the kit, uh, my thoughts on the kit, very good kit. goes together really well nothing tricky nothing weird about it um, works really good the figures are really good as far as the molding and all that kind of stuff so if you have a little bit of trouble painting figures you should be able to uh you know it makes it a little bit easier when you have decent figures let's put it that way as opposed to poorly uh molded figures um other than that, it's not really a whole lot to say. It's just a good kit. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I just want to say thanks again to Peter Person for sending it to me. I really appreciate it. I uh, really enjoyed building it, and uh, so thanks. Um, so at the end, I'll, like I said, I'll do some photos. Um, did I learn anything new on this kit? Yes. I uh, worked a little bit more with oils for doing all this staining and stuff around the uh, bottom edges, and you'll be able to see it a little bit better in the photos. But... Um, so I'm really stoked that I kind of figured that out. Uh, it's not like it was difficult or weird or anything. It's just I've never done it before. And uh, now I have something to add to the old uh, arsenal. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this whole series. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hints, tips, all that kind of stuff, just put them in the uh, comments section down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. But uh, anyway, um, fun project really enjoyed it if you get a chance to build this kit whether you build it in the soviet markings or if you go with the uh, u.s markings um, i think you'll really enjoy it um skill level it's uh easily a beginner could put this together um there's no fit issues there's no trickiness going on it just goes together exactly as it shows in the instructions and the instructions are very very clear so uh, that's it. That's my final words on it. So stay tuned for the slideshow. 
And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you all later.